Today in this lecture, we are going to talk about concepts related to glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and the significance of this pressure. As we are discussing determinants of GFR, glomerular filtration rate, and we have mentioned previously that there are several determinants of GFR. One of the very important determinant of glomerular filtration rate is glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Now, what is glomerular colloid osmotic pressure? Glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is basically a force which is opposing the filtration process. It is a force which is opposing the filtration process and this is basically generated due to the presence of proteins in plasma. So the plasma that is entering the glomerular capillaries through the afferent arteriole, it contains some proteins and those proteins are generating this pressure and it is a negative pressure as compared to the glomerular hydrostatic pressure which is favoring the filtration. Now, the GFR, the GFR is important in urine formation process and we are discussing the urine formation process in which filtration is the first step. And for the filtration, the rate of filtration is also important, the glomerular filtration rate. And glomerular filtration rate ultimately depends on several determinants, the glomerular hydrostatic pressure, glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, Bowman's capsule pressure and glomerular capillary coefficient Kf. Now, we have discussed, discussed some of the determinants and today we are discussing glomerular colloid osmotic pressure in detail and its importance. Now, this diagram, this diagram basically is the simplified version or the simplification of this diagram which shows that inside the kidney afferent arterioles they come and they uh, become the, uh, they, uh, they uh, bring blood to the glomerular capillaries where filtration occurs the filtrate then moves into the Bowman capsule and then the filtrate then moves through the nephron tubules the remaining blood then leaves to the efferent arteriole so here is the afferent arteriole here is the glomerular capillaries and here is the efferent arteriole now when coming to the point how this pressure will affect the GFR and GFR uh, then in turn has its effects on the renal functions so any any uh, any change or which will increase the protein components in the glomerular capillaries will increase the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and any change which decreases the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will decrease the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Now, if the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure increases, the GFR will decrease. If this pressure increases, GFR will fall down. If this pressure decreases, then GFR will increase. Now, because this is a negative pressure and it is opposing the filtration process, so that's why its, uh, its effects are opposite on the GFR. Coming to the point, what are those factors which can increase the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure? So, the first thing is that if the blood that is entering through the afferent arteriole, if that blood contains a lot of proteins, then due to high amount of proteins, automatically the, the amount of proteins in glomerular capillaries will also be high and due to which the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will increase. Now, if we present this thing here in the graph, we see that this is the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and this is the afferent arteriole this end and this is the efferent end normally when the filtration process starts normally when the filtration process starts the proteins are not filtered the proteins are diluted here but as the distance increases as the distance increases from the afferent end towards the efferent end from this end to this end the concentration of proteins increases as seen here that the, the proteins are concentrated on this end because the proteins cannot get filtered so they remain inside while the uh, fluid that is filtered they go outside so the concentration of proteins keep on increasing and as the concentration of proteins keep on increasing the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure due to proteins also keeps on increasing from this end to this end that has been shown here normally at the start of the afferent end the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is around 28 millimeter of mercury as the distance increases the protein concentrations increases because the fluid is filtered out and due to which the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure normally also keeps on increasing normally in normal circumstances and it increases up to 36 millimeter of mercury starting from 28 increases to 36 millimeter of mercury now this brings uh, the normal glomerular colloid osmotic pressure to around 32 millimeter of mercury which is the average of 22 and 36 this is normal this is the normal pattern so here the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure has been plotted and this pressure is increasing with the increasing distance as the blood moves from this end to this end this pressure increases because the concentration of proteins it is increasing here the proteins are scattered here they get concentrated now the factors which will increase the concentration of protein here one factor is as we discussed that if the blood that is entering in the afferent arteriole if it is having high concentration of proteins then the glomerular capillaries also will have a high concentration of proteins and when we plot that we will see that even at this end even at this end the glo glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will be that high it may be here or here or here depending upon the concentration of proteins so by increasing the afferent arteriolar colloid osmotic pressure the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure also increases and this graph may then look like this that it the normal glomerular colloid osmotic pressure may start from like 30 or 32 or 36 even at the start of the afferent arteriole normally it starts from 28 and then keep on increasing now this is one uh, one factor which can increase glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and if glomerular colloid osmotic pressure increases gfr will fall a second, uh, a second factor which can increase the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is the filtration fraction. It is the filtration fraction. Now, when the fluid, when the plasma enters here, normally around 20%, normally around 
20% of the plasma that enters here get filtered. The remaining 80% leaves through the efferent end. If this fraction, the fraction or the amount of plasma that is filtered, if that fraction, that portion is increased, suppose for example 40% instead of that normal 20%, then the concentration of proteins in the glomerular capillaries will rise, it will increase further due to which the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure may increase. Now see here, this is the glomerular capillary. This is also glomerular capillary. Here, the amount of plasma that is entering has been filtered and the portion that is filtered is very high. The filtration fraction is very high. And here, the same amount of plasma has entered, but only small amount of plasma has been filtered out. The remaining is in the glomerular capillary. So we see here the filtration fraction is high. And here the filtration fraction is low. Due to high filtration fraction, due to high filtration fraction, this graph now shows the high filtration fraction. And due to high filtration fraction, this normal graph, this normal curve, it shifts upward to this level. And we see that due to increasing filtration fraction, due to increasing filtration fraction, the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure can increase. Now the reverse will happen if the filtration fraction is decreased. If the amount, the fraction, the portion of plasma that is filtered here, this is the same diagram. This is the same diagram is like this, but I have just explained the portion or the fraction or the filtration fraction. Now if the filtration fraction is decreased, the concentration of protein will decrease. Here the proteins are con concentrated. Here the concentration is decreased. So the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will decrease and the GFR will increase. Now, how will we increase the filtration fraction? How can we increase the filtration fraction? The filtration fraction can be increased to, uh, through two main uh, changes. One is either increasing the GFR, the second is decreasing the plasma flow. Decreasing the plasma flow or increasing the GFR will increase the filtration fraction. And the reverse is also true. By increasing the flow and decreasing the GFR, the filtration fraction can decrease. Now see, if the plasma that is flowing through the glomerular capillaries, it is if it is flowing slowly, you've mentioned it, that if the flow is, if the flow is decreased, if the flow is decreased, then what happens is that the plasma is flowing slowly. So the fraction that normally is filtered 20%, it may increase to around 40% or 50% or whatever. So the fraction that is filtered is increased. So due to slow movement or due to slow flow, due to decreased flow of the plasma, the filtration fraction is increased. And due to fil increased filtration fraction, the concentration of proteins in turn increases which increases glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and due to increased glomer glomerular colloid osmotic pressure, the GFR decreases. Now, it simply shows that if the plasma flow through the glomerular capillaries is decreased due to decreased blood flow, the GFR will fall. Even if other pressures remain the same, even if the glomerular hydrostatic pressure remains the same, if Bowman capsules pressure remains the same, still, just due to decrease in the blood flow, just due to decrease in the renal plasma flow, the GFR will fall. Now, Another thing is that if you want to increase the filtration fraction, then the GFR can be increased. The GFR can be increased. There are a lot of factors which can increase the GFR, but normally the increase and decrease in GFR will not play that much important role. But increasing and decreasing the plasma flow play a big role in increasing the filtration factor, uh, fraction. The fil the, if you do not change the flow, but you only want to change the GFR, then you will have to change the permeability. You will have to change the permeability of this membrane so that it can allow a big flow or a flow with high speed or flow with high rate. So that is possible, quite possible and can sometimes occur. But normally the flow determines the GFR. So decreasing the flow increases the filtration fraction and increasing the filtration fraction increases the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and increasing the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure basically brings down the GFR. Now, if the flow is increased, if the blood flow is increased, the plasma, renal plasma flow is increased, then the fraction will, the filtration fraction will fall because if plasma is flowing quickly, then the amount of time required to filter will be decreased. So the filtration fraction may be less than 20%. When the filtration fraction falls down, the concentration of proteins will decrease, the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will also decrease and the GFR will increase. So this proves that by in decreasing the blood flow, the GFR decreases, but indirectly. It increases or decreases due to the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. It does not increase due to changes in the glomerular hydrostatic pressure because this is the primary pressure. This pressure is very important and we are not changing this pressure. We are only changing the flow and still the GFR falls. Similarly, if the flow is increased, if the flow is increased, then it increases the GFR without changing, without uh, changing the glomerular hydrostatic pressure. So to sum it up, the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure is a very important determinant of the GFR. It can increase or decrease GFR and the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure can increase due to two factors. It can either increase due to the increase in the arterial colloid osmotic pressure due to which the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure will be high from the start of this graph. And the second thing is by increasing the filtration fraction, we can also increase the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure. Now, how can we increase the filtration fraction? We can increase the filtration fraction by decreasing the plasma flow, renal plasma flow, or by increasing the GFR. But increasing the GFR is not a primary method, while increasing and decreasing the plasma flow due to increasing decreasing blood flow is a very important method for increasing or decreasing the GFR. Because the filtration fraction is, the, is GFR by renal plasma flow, so 
increase in GFR increases the filtration fraction. Decrease in GFR decreases the filtration fraction. Is the renal plasma flow is inversely related to the filtration fraction. So increasing the plasma flow will decrease the filtration fraction. Increasing the plasma flow will decrease the filtration fraction. But decreasing the plasma flow will increase the filtration fraction. They are inversely related to each other. So that's all about the glomerular colloid osmotic pressure and its effect on the GFR and hence its effects on the renal functions. Thanks a lot for watching the video.